what can you how can you explain the the fact that three journalists has become such a global phenomenon? What factors can account for that? That's that's a really interesting question. I mean, I would approach the question by looking first at um, how regionalism evolved in different contexts and then which were the major push factors. So rather than necessarily just starting with the obvious history of regionalism post-1945 and looking at the rise of the European community or the United Nations recognition of regionalism, I might go back and look at some of the historical settings where, for example, European states, Middle Eastern states um, or American states had started to cooperate at the regional level. And I think if you then look at those processes and consider then the post-World War, um, World War II world and the environment in which regionalism grows during this Cold War period and becomes, if you like, a global phenomenon, it gets taken up increasingly by different regions mm -hmm. and by different actors. And that's the setting in which I think we are, we're talking about um, contemporary regionalism. And so I think there's example, there's inspiration from other actors, and there's also the um, multilateral environment, both provided by the Cold War and by the, the UN system and other actors. So I think we really do see the expansion of regionalism to take in the mm -hmm. globe. In a way, I would call it the globalization of regionalism, right. yeah. um, both in terms of actors and issue areas. So there are uh, these kind of critical juncture moments in which regionalism... Yeah, I think that's a really helpful way of thinking about it. We have critical junctures. Um, critical junctures might be provided by something like decolonization or a major war. Mm -hmm. You might refer to the ending of the Soviet Union um, and the breakup of the Eastern Bloc as being another critical mm -hmm. juncture um, that affects regionalism both in terms of new states that emerge from those, um, the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc, or how different states around the world are, are able now to engage in regional processes in ways that were not possible before. Mm -hmm. So I think there are some very important junctures provided by changes in the international system, changes in the global economy, and of course the greater assertiveness and autonomy of regional actors. And I think there's a wider question as well which reflects shifts in the global balance of power. Okay, right. And I wanted to ask you about uh, the seminar itself. What's your opinion about this mixture of having practitioners and academics, uh, interdisciplinary approach, uh, policy oriented? What's your perception? Well, I think it's, it's a good idea because I think the trouble with academics is we tend to talk to academics. And the trouble with policymakers, first, certainly in my own country, is they tend to talk to each other. So I think the idea of a dialogue, the idea of a meeting point is a really useful one to get us to talk in the same language, to understand some of the problems and to try to approach them with a, with a, with a sympathetic view um, which incorporates both the scholarly and academic side and at the same time hopefully is, is interesting from a policy making perspective. So I'm, I'm, I believe that's what we should be doing is to interact. Mm 